So let's let's wait for recording to start. Okay, recording has okay. Good evening. So this is week two. So the agenda for today is how to determine epsilon optimum. Okay, so we, we we look at last week example, okay, which I did not complete. Then we're going to look into plastic behavior of material. We're going to look at uh, strain hardening. What do we mean by strain hardening? Thermal softening and strain rate. And I hope to incorporate a case study. And we are going to have a break at 8 o'clock. Okay, so the break will start from 8 to 8.15. Right, so let's go into the first part is how to calculate epsilon optimum. Okay, so if you could uh, recap, we were, we were looking at two materials. Right. So two materials. So I'm going to sketch the uh, material behavior. OK, so so this term over here is classified as strain hardening. OK, A, B and N is known as strain, hard, which I will elaborate later. On. OK, so. This is my strain. This is my stress, right? So we we. We look at the plastic region. Okay, so if this is 500,000, 1,500. So I'm going to sketch the first material. Okay, I'm going to sketch the first material, which is AISI uh, 1045. Right, so it has a curve looking like this. So this is our AISI 1045. Then we, I'm going to sketch a uh, dual phase deal. Okay, so we have dual phase deal. So dual phase deal, I'm going to start from uh, 120. Okay. And then at one stage, it's going to cross over. Okay, so this is our uh, dual phase deal. I should remember I got 600. So dual phase U 600 also. OK, by the way, you all have this information OK on from your last week lecture. So we, we like to determine our uh, strain optimum. OK. So this is strain optimum and some student ask why is strain optimum not here. OK, some student asks why. Strain optimum is not here. OK, it's not here is because the strain optimum occurs. When the energy. To be formed AISI. 1045 will be equal to the energy required to uh, plastically deform dual phase steel. OK, I've seen a post uh, after the lecture. Some student asked that question. OK, I'd like to clarify that. If, 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 if we were to pick this point, right? The energy required to deform dual phase steel, right? If we put this, the, the area required to deform dual phase steel is still lower than the energy required to deform uh, AI SI 1045, as you can see down here. You can see that how it's shaded. Okay. And so we have to find why is this strain optimum. And what is the purpose of this? Okay. Remember, we have a pricing system, right? We say that, okay, over here, dual phase steel, we charge our customer uh, 50 cents. Right? Over here, 1045, we charge our customer $2, for example. Right? So for this material, when you compare both materials, there will be a stage, right? Just to uh, quickly recap, over here, the cost to deform uh, dual phase steel six hundred is higher than. AISI 
1045, right? And then on, on this side, right? On this side, we will get a uh, dual phase deal. Is cheaper to deform when compared to uh, AISI ten forty five. Right. So now the thing is how to de de uh, deform uh, determine uh, epsilon optimum. So we know energy, okay, so just focus on the formula, right? Plastic, uh, plastic stress, okay? We just look at a strain hardening. Don't worry, later on, I will elaborate on strain, hard, strain hardening. So you have stress is equal to A plus by B epsilon PL power of N, okay? So the energy, to induce a uh, plastic deformation, U is equal to you integrate stress D epsilon PL. Okay, so this will be equal to uh, to A epsilon PL plus by B epsilon PL M plus one divided by M plus one. Very simple integration. Okay, so we are going to uh, make the condition where the energy to deform AISI ten forty five is equal to the energy required to deform a uh, dual phase steel. So for this calculation, we're going to put a note. We are going to ignore energy in the elastic region. Later on, I'll explain why, okay? Because the energy uh, in the elastic region is very small for that simple reason, okay? Not because of any other things. Right, any questions so far? Anyone, please? Everything is crystal clear? Good, so we're going to form the equation Okay. We're just going to put in the numbers, then we're going to solve it. Okay. So now we know the U for AISI uh, 1045. Okay. So we're going to put in U AISI 1045 is equal to the energy to the form dual phase D. Okay, so A is 553.1 times 10 to the power 6. Okay, and then epsilon optimum, right? We want to find the optimum plus by B, which is 600.8 times 10 to the power 6. Okay, so epsilon optimum. And then to the power of n plus 1, so it's 1.234. And then the whole thing divided by uh, 1.234. So this is the energy to the form AISI 1045. And then the whole term over here will be equal to 120 times 10 to the power 6 epsilon optimum. Right, and then plus by one zero two zero times ten to the power of six epsilon optimum one point one nine six divided by one point one nine six. Okay, so I'm going to uh, tidy up uh, this equation. So so we can. So the first term is, is, is fine. So we have 
0.1 times 10 to the power 6 epsilon optimum plus by 600 point power of 6 divided by 1.234 is uh, 486 point 872 times 10 to the power of 6 epsilon optimum uh, 1.234 and then the whole thing will be equal to 120 times 10 to the power of 6 epsilon optimum plus by 1020 power 6 by 1.196 is equal to uh, 852 yeah, 852.843 times 10 to the power 6 epsilon optimum uh, 1.196 okay then from here I, I'm, I'm just going to move the equation over here, OK? I like to keep the diagram so you can watch what's going on. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, does that say um, 486 decimal 872 times 10 to the power 6? Yes, 486.872, yes. Oh. My writing is too small, is it? Okay. Oh, I just want to make sure it's a decimal, that's all. Okay. Thank you. So we bring everything over. So you got 433.1 times 10 to the power 6, uh, epsilon optimum. Okay. So we can still plus by the 486. 0.872 okay epsilon optimum by 1.234 1.234 come on and then minus 852.843 times 10 to the power 6 epsilon optimum uh, 1.196 the whole thing will be equal to zero so you can you can factor up epsilon optimum you can take out the epsilon optimum okay and take out every one has times 10 to power 6 we can drop the 10 power 6 so so epsilon optimum bracket uh, 43.1 uh, plus by 486.872 uh, epsilon optimum 0.234 and then minus 852.843 uh, epsilon optimum 0.196 the whole thing will be equal to zero okay so over here uh we can calculate what is our so you can drop because the time center power says you can drop down because the right hand side is equal to zero epsilon optimum you also can drop it okay because you bring over it's equal to zero you can drop it so the fun the equation to solve is 433.1 okay so 433.1 right uh plus by 486.872 uh epsilon optimum 0 0.234 minus by 852.843 uh, epsilon optimum uh, 0 0.196 the whole thing will be equal to zero okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into i'm going to go into excel okay some of you have probably learned this before some of you have not is using Excel to solve it. You can use any software, okay? You can use Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Delta, whatever, okay? I just uh, want to use Excel to solve this. So I'm going into Excel now, okay? I will, 
Okay. So this is the equation that we want to solve, 423.1.